So last year, if you remember, we started this from scratch. Things haven't gone exactly to plan. It's not looking as good as it should. So we're going to sort it out today. First of all, we're going to scarify it. So let's start. Throughout history, men have always been drawn to grass. Whether it be in the park, a sports ground, or simply in your own garden, there's just something about those quintessential British stripes that makes you want them for yourself. Not to mention getting one over on your neighbours. Follow Daniel on his lawn journeys in his step-by-step -step videos this year whilst you create your own lawn journey, achieving that dream lawn you have always wanted with simple and easy to follow methods. The lawn you have always dreamed of is only a grass seed away. Now sit back and enjoy the video. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. So just have a quick walk over the lawn. If you remember what we did last year, we dug the old lawn up and then we put uh, the fleece underneath before we put the roots on it to stop the worm cast coming through. Now that is job complete and job done. I think we've had three worm casts all around the edge though. So that's fine as long as they're not in the uh, in the middle where they were. That's fine. That's all disease damage. We had a bit of a disease outbreak because this area doesn't see the sun in the winter at all. And we've got all these trees hanging over the lawn here. So that dies off there. We've got the pleached hedging up there, which means it doesn't see the sun here when the comes round. It doesn't get wet when it rains. It dries out. So today we're going to sort it out. We're going to scarify it and then I've got 20 bags of 70-30 top dressing on the other side of the hedge there and what we're going to do is it's just sunk in a little few areas along the edge where the wood is so we're just going to raise those up like we did at Peter's job so that when we're mowing we're actually starting above the wood because at the minute we're going to catch that wood and chip it a little bit I and mean, I've done that already uh, so don't tell anybody but with no annual meadow grass did well to keep that out you might think it looks awful now and it does to the uh, to the naked eye and to the untrained eye but if i was to feed this up now we'd have a great lawn probably good enough for your standards maybe if you're not that fussed but not good enough for mine because those areas in the middle wouldn't really regenerate we need that reseeded so i've left this unfed since last year because we don't want we don't want Sorry, we're just adapting the camera there because it's gone fuzzy. Um, what we don't want is the old lawn coming through before the new seed has come through because we don't really want to be getting on this and cutting it whilst that seed's still coming through. It's so cold at the minute still. It's uh, 28th of April and it's absolutely freezing. So until those nighttime temperatures get above 9, 10 degrees, that's when you're going to see your seed coming through because it's not dropping to freezing. But at the minute, it's getting down to 2, 3 at night. So you run the risk of the seed that has come through perishing because of the frost and there's a few more frosts to come as early May because that's what happens. Never plant your bedding until mid-May once all the frosts have gone, you'd be surprised. So what I'm going to do is get my scarifier out, scarify it and we're going to get try to get all these leaves out that have fallen and just rotted away on there and again like normal create some grooves for this seed to sit in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in a few days, over a few days, because what I want to do is I'm going to take all this top growth off, scarify it, wet an agent on, good downpour of, of sprinkling with the sprinkler, and then top dress it, seed, seed it, top dress it, rain dew Sunday, so then that will really get us going because the rain falls better than uh, water. So let's crack on. OMG, what the hell have I done? <laughs> it looked all right before, didn't it? What the hell have I done? Am I going to get back from this one? This is probably like the worst after 
scary uh, after scalp I've ever seen. Exposed a lot of all them leaves there. You see, so it's a good thing because we've seen all them. We wouldn't have seen them otherwise. I thought there's a few, but there's quite a lot. So uh, what I did was I went over it on like a, what I thought was pretty short, and I lowered it again because it just wasn't short enough. Uh, and then I lowered it again and went over it in three or four, what did I do, three directions because you hit it from different angles, you always take off a bit more going over it in uh, different directions, so bear that in mind, that's a good little tip. You see like where that's not quite took the grass off, that's because it's lower, so the mower doesn't uh, take that off because it can't get to it, so we need to raise that bit up and not put as much on that bit there where it's high. So, looks a bit of a mess, but you know what I'm like, I'll sort it. Needs a bit of help from Keith, a bit of water. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to scarify it now, rake it all up, um, wet an agent tomorrow, but what I'm going to get him to do tonight is I'm going to get him to water it tonight, just to see if we can get some water in there. The reason I'm not putting a wetting agent on now is because I used the last of what I had at the job I did earlier, which... Uh, was on the galactic lawn. I call that galactic lawn with the slope at the top. Filming that video, and I didn't think to leave some for this, which would have been ideal, really, because it's only a small area. Then we could have let the water on there over, not overnight, but while I'm going or gone, he can just leave it on and keep moving it around. But we're getting to water it, then tomorrow we'll stick the wet nature on, a bit more water, and then like at the circle job the other day, it lacked almost like a glue, so I'm gonna put the seed on. It'll stick where it needs to stick. Just a little thing as well. Just walking around the edge, you can see where I couldn't quite get to the edge with the mower. So you can see it's quite a lot lower. So we're going to have to go on quite a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the strimmer out and I'll strim that. And that'll be absolutely fine. So no need to worry about that if you've got that problem. Because obviously you only get so close with the cylinder. So we'll just get the strimmer out on that. Strim all that down where we need to. And then we'll get on with Scarify, so let's see what we can get done with that. Okay, so we've just done the Scarifying and created those lovely grooves for the seed to sit in there. A few bits of detritus still on there, but when I go on with the mower, the rotary, and pick those up, they will not be there. So just look at what I've pulled up there by just using the rotary mower on number one. All that dusty grass picked up a lot of the detritus that I talked about. So all in all, a job well done. So we're back, left the hose on last night. Keep kept swapping it around to give us a nice moist surface. You can see it's half one and the sun is casting a shadow on the uh, the lawn there. So you can see why it dries out in that area um, because it doesn't get wet. So you can see like the shadow there, that's what, uh, so when it rains that area doesn't get wet and that's what causes the problems. So as you seen yesterday, we scalped it, scarified it. First job I'm gonna do now is put a wetting agent on. I'm gonna water that in get the seed out, get that on, and then we're gonna cover it in the 70-30 top dressing. So, let's crack on. Right, so that's the wetting agent on. As you saw, I'll give it a little bit of a watering in as well. Not much, but just it's just drying out a little bit. So I just wanted to re-wet it, get it in a little bit, and it just, uh, say that seed will stick to the wet surface. Got my seed ready to go. Gonna go on at 50 grams a square metre. Have a go at me, don't have a go at me, I'm not bothered, but 50 grams on this one, because under that tree there, there's not a lot of grass at all. Um, a bit of death in the middle like we saw yesterday from the disease and that and um, I only went on at 35 in the 
when we did it, I think. I can't remember, but I went on at a pretty low rate. And I really probably should have gone at a bit more, especially with it being a dwarf rye. I find it's because it's a smaller grass. It obviously doesn't take as much space. So the recommendation is 35, but and that's the same as a normal rye. But normal rye is bigger and that covers more space. So you would think you'd have to up your rate on a dwarf rye. So I'm still in the kind of camp of still adapting my rates to do with dwarf rye. I'm not quite uh, the finished article on that one, but I've seen a company on Twitter who do tennis courts and they use a hell of a lot of seed. You know, more, you know, more than, I don't know, maybe like 100 grams a square meter maybe, and, and they, their courts are lovely. So don't be afraid to just try different things. What we don't want is too much seed in one space, like big clumps, because that is a problem, but a little bit of seed extra than normal few bits for the birds some probably won't take anyway um, so it's just all these different variables to take into account and then we'll see where we are so we'll get some best get that on winds are just about right it's just a bit breezy but at the minute it's nice and still so it's a perfect time to get this on So I just wanted to show you why we're using top dressing today and not Jack's Magic. You can see my finger is level with the wood. So you've got that much depth missing from that top. So when I'm mowing it, I'm not actually riding along this top edge, which I want to be. So I want to build up the level along this edge where it needs. Because you're obviously just going to get sinkage on a new lawn. You know, I can't recreate hundreds of years of time in, in one sitting. So things settle over time. So if we to use Jack's magic, yeah, we'd get it up to the top there, but it would just uh, blow away once it dried out or it'll just rot down in time and leave uh, leave the same problem. So we use top dressing. So I'll put it on thicker at the edges and then a bit thinner where, like that area there where it's quite um, higher anyway. But we still need to put a, a covering to cover the seed. So what I'll do is 20 bags, I'll just tip each bag out and just spread it with my brush don't need a level loot or a pallet or anything like that. No pallet zone, remember? And then we'll see how we get on. Uh, so it won't take me long, because I've got the bags there, I'll just carry two at a time then. And this could be quite therapeutic. It looks good, doesn't it, really? I love that, I love that. Uh, I wasn't too keen on that at first out there. It's a nightmare to mow, but it really does look good uh, to the eye of just looking at it here, very uh, kind of really defined and uh, cutting edge. So, looking better, I'm a bit more, what can we say, a bit more kind of uh, jubilant today, because yesterday I was like, oh God, what have I done? But uh, today I'm seeing, because the sun's out, got a better frame of mind and I can see what's going to happen. So, feeling good, let's get on with it. Okay, right, so we're just about to spread the top dressing. Got me a pair of scissors today, I no, normally have one of these. Funny story behind this, I don't know if I mentioned it when I was doing this job, when I was seeding this job last year, and I was covering it over, I ever forgot my scissors or my scissors broke and I didn't have a pair, but I needed them. And then lo and behold, no sooner as I realized I needed some scissors, this guy walks up there with a rucksack on and he goes, you all right, mate, I'm selling, I'm selling stuff. Um, I've just come out of prison um, and just making a living. I'm just selling things. So he had all kinds of things in there, um, scissors, um, just like camp, like things that you need in the kitchen really, dishcloths, J cloths and all that kind of thing. And uh, so I says, oh, you just come at the right time, I needed a pair of scissors, I can't believe it, it's like you've been placed at this specific point in time just, just for me. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so we got talking and he's got these scissors out and he says, oh, they're really good, these, because they, uh, they use them in the emergency services. And uh, what happens is they separate like that. So, so he has them in his hand like that. And he says, yeah, this is what you can do. And so you can use them to cut wood and stuff. And I says, oh, just by the way, what were you in prison for? And he says, oh, I murdered my friend, my cousin. And I was like, my God. So I quickly bought them and uh, went on my way. <laughs> so here's Keith. He's saying hello, Keith. <laughs> he does exist. He's not giving me the fingers today because he's normally coming out giving me the 
giving me the uh, the V sign in the background, but he's uh, bringing me out of brew today. Because Chelsea didn't lose last night, he he's coming out, but when Chelsea lose, I never see him. So we're quite a rarity today. So we just brush it in like that. And sand doesn't rot it, sand doesn't go anywhere. It stays where it is, so that's why we use it. And it will stay there forever. Whereas, like I said, Jack's magic will rot away and just leave you in the same hole as you were before. So that's nice, so we'll just do that. Just wanna, just have that, the old grass just poking through the surface. Then you know, you're not smothering it because if you just left it like that, I know that's ridiculous, I would never do that. But if you was to leave it like that, you, your grass would never grow through. So you can just see the, the old grass is just poking through, which is, which is just enough to cover the seed and let the old grass through. So I'll just do one bag and then I'll just uh, do the rest quiet and you can just have a bit of relaxation time listening to the music and watching me work. So you go, it's filling in nicely that. The ground's not too wet that, it's sucking all the moisture into the sand or the sand's sucking all the moisture out because sometimes that can happen if you do it too wet before you get a chance to spread it. The sand's already started taken out of the ground by capillary action and then you end up moving along really wet root zone which is not what you want when you're trying to fill in micro like undulations like this. So there we go, so that's all you need to do. So one bag probably does. Uh, probably like three square meters, maybe. Maybe a bit less. Not as it doesn't go as far as Jack's magic. But uh, we know that. Just go. Obviously, it's a smaller bag, so it's not going to. But it's just not got this. It's just not. It's like weight by weight sand, not weight by volume, which Pete, Pete is. So if you ever wonder when you see something which says W forward slash W. That's weight by weight, which is like its actual weight, where peat is weight by volume, because if you actually put 25 kilograms of peat in a bag, you'd have a massive bag. So they have to do it by volume rather than actual weight. I can't think of anything else which is weight by volume, actually, other than like peat, compost. But there we go. So that's just nicely filled in. I'll show you what I've done later on the edges now we are up to the surface top now of the edge of the wood there we go so i'll uh, just do that and then when, once i've finished i'll give it a, a sweep all over get rid of any footprints or anything because i will just sometimes stand on where i've been but that's all you need to do let's crack on Right, so I'll just come back to this bit where I had my finger before. You can see now I'm level with the surface, so we built that up nicely. So before I was a finger width down, and now that's our new level now. The grass will grow through that, and then this will be our mower where our roller runs against the soil level rather than it being below, because that means we don't have to strim the edge every time I come and end up with the uncuttable area. So I've done that now, spread it all over, I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is just go over very lightly with my brush just to get rid of all the footprints and just smooth out any undulations that I've missed and then time for some bit of water. No sprinklers, absolutely no way on this. If you wanted you could put another wetting agent on now but always when you're wicking on this new sand like I've said before if you just wet it a little bit it'll stick to your shoe if you've got grips on your shoe it'll just take off that layer that you've just wet so if you are going to spray this area, walk backwards and don't um, walk on any areas that you've treated and that's a good way to do it. Or if you can't do that and you need to walk on it all the way you sprayed, stick some plastic bags on your feet and then that stops the transfer of the 
sand into your, into the sole into the grips on your shoes so another little, little nugget of information there so let's get that brush out and uh we'll get it brushed see how uh the shadow is now it's even bigger now so from two o'clock onwards that's drenched in sunshine this isn't so that's again going to be a problem when it comes to the seed so because we're only going to get that mid-afternoon um like 10 11 12 o'clock sunshine and for the rest of the day we're going to be struggling so this bit here will probably come through a bit later than the rest Okay, so that's looking really good. That took me half an hour to do that. That's all. So now it's time to get with some water. Now this is the hardest bit because you've really got to concentrate. Well, maybe not concentrate, but you've really got to have the passion and the perseverance to do it because what happens is, like I said, you just walk the top layer, it just dries up. So you've got to really get it in. So you've got to keep watering and keep watering and eventually that capillary action will soak all the way through, but it does take multiple watering. So don't give up after the first one and think, oh yeah, the top surface is wet, that's job done. It's not, you've got to get that water right through because the seeds underneath, which needs wetting, you're not wetting, you have to wet the top of the sand for it to soak through to get through to the seed. The seed ain't going to go and get it until it actually has roots. So it's up to you to get that seed watered. There's a bit of moisture in there which we put on before, but that's not really enough. We're now rely it's now reliant on us or the rain. But as we said, it's only going to rain on that bit. That bit's not going to get any. So we're going to have to be. Do There's some rain due on Saturday night to Sunday morning, which will do as a job, but it won't do under there. So we'll have to come in and do that to keep up with the rest. So get some water on, and then it's uh, home time for the weekend. All right, so that's done. Use 16 bags, spread them, just watered. So keep up that regime now, no sprinklers because it will just all wash off because it will just too much water in one area. So definitely sprinkler free zone on this one. You could say, why have I not used Jack's Magic on top? Because it'll just dry out and blow off and it'll just wash into 
little craters everywhere so don't put Jack's magic on top of sand done it been there got the t-shirt so the hardest thing you'll do today is lift those 25 kilogram bags because what I've just done is easy and anyone can do it I'm just showing you how so have a go this weekend if it's your turn and then we'll see how this one looks in about two weeks and I think it should be looking spot on and I'll get some uh, products on then so have a good weekend and uh, take care bye bye